All right, here we are. Still making the game? Rape Finder. Man, I'm stoked about this video game. It's got some huge potential. This multiplayer um, world with a hub world and with the in-game matches. I'm excited about it. I've been playing a lot of multiplayer games lately, and I'm really excited about this. This un uniqueness of Wraith Finder. Um, okay, so what, what I've been working on is this cool teleport animation when you teleport into your hub world, and also when you teleport into matches. So that's what it looks like. Um, and this is a combination of 3D and two-dimensional techniques. You can see that we've got the 3D model of the character, which is animated in Blender and Magic of Oxel combined, and then combined in my also C++ code into a, the animations that they are, they are right now. Um, and then you, we've also got this two-dimensional sprite. So when it uh, when it actually does this teleport animation, it renders a two-dimensional version of the three-dimensional character and uses that to do this cool effect. I'll slow down time so you can see, but the effect is like the character's got this blue copy of himself and a red copy of himself and a white copy of himself, and he goes and then he does this other teleport animation. You can see it pretty clearly if I slow down time a lot here. Does that animation where he gets down and kneels down, and then we've got this red, blue, teleport, and also some other effects like smoke and ring and stuff like that. We can see it again in, in slow motion. Whoa, whoa. That was, was crazy fast. I was trying to go back to normal time, but it went way too far. Uh, so there you go. This That's what I've been working on. And, um... What I... Oh, yeah. Also, when I, when I teleport into battle, there's some issue where it's not clearing behind the entire world. And so if I rotate the camera, it does this. And then it'll eventually crash. So, that doesn't really matter right now. Their whole point is that I've got this whole... This sweet looking teleport animation that makes you feel like, heck yeah, I want to play this video game. I love it. That's it in slow motion. I'm thinking sometimes when you start the game, it might be just that you're standing there and he doesn't teleport in and he just he just gets up from kneeling. I've, that's the, what it would look like when I first started making this and uh, it looked pretty cool. I was like, well, this is sweet already. Just him kneeling down and standing back up. It's like, sweet. Yeah, this guy's ready to, to rock. He's ready to do something. Um, but the teleport is even better. It's kind of over the top. You're like, whoa, what the heck just happened? I teleported in. Man, my character can ride on a beam of light. Wow. Sweet. Also, these thicker health labels. That actually really helps in battle. Um, but now I'm working on these items where you can go and pitch. Uh, you can pitch some stuff. Just buy some things with some currencies. Some like levitate boots. I'm really, I'm kind of rethinking the way items will work in this game, and um, I really like this idea where you can you earn like currency and experience while you're in battle, and then you come back here to the hub world and spend it. But it's not that you go find items in uh, in the actual matches. Like right now, I've got it where you can go, you can find a ghost sword in a match. Show you what I'm talking about. But what if you bought it in the hub world and then you came back and every single match you had from then on, you always had the boots or you always had levitate. I think that might actually be kind of more of a song bringery way to go with it and also add a really unique element to Wraith Finder because usually you're in, in games like this where you're uh, fighting against other people or competitively or co cooperatively you're usually finding items in the match but what if you what if you really did where you were able to like what if you were to, able to play like um, League of Legends for example and you always had some power up it, it uh, actually doesn't really make as much sense with League of Legends because League of Legends is really all about competitiveness and fighting fairly and all that Wraithfinder is really not about that um, there's a lot that makes it different so Anyways, stuff to be playing around with. I'll show you some code. Working on like stuff like this where it just views the item. This is pretty simple code. It's basically just looking up, um, well, there's now the item structure. So an item structure is basically has an integer ID, a string key, a file name, a price for all the different currencies that might 
be a minimum quantity, maximum quantity, a color, an ability that that's associated with, a button that it's associated with, like in a default button status, and then also flags, well, all kinds of item flags. You might have this item as a, a consumable item and stuff like that. Uh, and then they all the functionality to make these these work and load and all that. That's all in item.cpp. Basically just a structure that loads itself from data. And we'll show you the data that I'm looking at. Items.txt. This is a really simple example. I really haven't fleshed this out yet, but it would be something like this, right? Blink, that's the key. File names, weapon01.vox or whatever. These are all going to be different. And then prices. So this is uh, zero diamonds for experience to buy the blink. And that's really all this item will need. And and then again in strings, English dot text. Any all the strings texts will be doing stuff like this, where it this is how the description of the item works, right? In the English language, it gets so we look up we look up item dash and then the key. So for example, blink would be item dash blink, and then that gives us this string blink uh, blink orb colon space teleport forward a few steps. That's all one string. That gets parsed by sub, you know separating it out based on that colon. This is the name portion of the item, and this is the description portion of the item, and all that gets applied and rendered, created labels and sprites and planes and everything that's needed here on the hub world. Just using a simple an, an animation function. And here, there's um, when you stand near this object, right, to buy it, it starts describing it. There will also be a um, what I want to see here is the camera, um, actually this levitate, levitate in the air, this text, all that on the bottom of the screen so you can still see the item. The camera zooms in a little bit so you can see the item even clearer. And also we should, we'll see some currency um, beneath this text right here. You'll see, oh, this costs four diamonds and this costs one experience or whatever. And um, and then if you, so basically this this happens, you get close to the item and it shows you the info and you, you actually touch it and it says, hey, do you want to buy this? And then you can actually, you know, eventually, once I get it all coded, you'll be able to actually spend your experience or your, your um, diamonds or whatever they are to buy the item. Or no, don't buy the item. So there, there you have it. That's what I'm working on. Items, this hub world, the teleporting between the worlds. It's a really fun part of Wraithbinder right now. Wraithbinder is really starting to come together and feel like an actual game which is awesome. So, thanks for watching this video. Catch you next time.